What's up everybody, Brian Tong here at WWDC 25. If you haven't seen already, I did a recap of kind of the big highlights from all the announcements, but this video is gonna be all about iOS 26. Okay, so I want you to buckle up. We're gonna go really deep in this, talk about the new features and some of my reactions to it, but iOS 26 it was announced officially here at WWDC, of course, we're gonna touch upon a little bit the liquid glass design. It's gonna make this feel like a whole new device. I, you know, for those of us that have been saying like the iPhone has felt the same since like the 12 Pro, the 13 Pro, I don't think you're gonna say that once you put on iOS 26 and get that liquid glass goodness. Uh, just the fact that it's gonna feel floaty, we're gonna be able to see through layers. It's not, to me, it's more than a fresh coat of paint. There's a lot of animations and subtle things that Apple showed at the keynote that tells me that this feels like a more organic living thing. I talked all about it on the previous video, so I'm not gonna linger on that. But let's talk about some of the changes that we actually have inside some of these apps. First thing, just to touch upon the home screen and the lock screen, yes, we have the adaptable time that kind of moves around, resizes its font based on your home screen, your lock screen. If there's empty space, it's gonna almost like organically shift with you. I thought that was really cool. The other thing with the lock screen is spatial scenes. So taking a photo and then using what Apple really learned from Vision OS and, and previous OSs, being able to make that a 3D type looking photo where you can move it a little bit side to side and get that depth. I love, I, you know what, I never thought that I would love that on a lock screen, but I think that's a really cool detail there. And then also animated Apple Music artwork. If you haven't played with it already, that does exist. Some albums actually had animated artwork, but now you're gonna be able to see that full animated artwork on your lock screen while music is playing. So those are some new cosmetic things right when you pick up your phone for the very first time. We touched upon the camera app in my last video, a simplified, redesigned, really clean looking version of the camera app. Yes, still has those liquid glass details, but really the focus on just switching between video and photo, swiping up for all your different settings, your frame rate, your resolution, and having that look like a floating glass type menu on top of it. But I love the simplification and just getting to the content as quick as possible in the camera app. You also have a redesign of the Photos app. Now remember last year, iOS, I guess, yeah, because they jumped to 26, it was iOS 18. Last year, the photo, photo app redesign was a little controversial. I was not, it was hard for me to get used to the new design. And yes, you could kind of change in the settings where I just want to see my photos right away. But now using this liquid glass design, there's going to be an actual tab that separates between the library and the collections. You'll have the 3D effect available in your photos. I'm, I'm, we're obviously going to need to play with it more, but at least the hint of Apple showed us they're really redesigning a lot of their apps across the board to simplify it while giving these floating, glassy, translucent menu bars. I know, very cool. Also, Safari, guess what? The tab bar on the bottom also floats above the web browser, giving you more focus on the content. But I do, there's times where you see a mix of colors underneath that glass texture that, I'm sorry, it does look cool and sexy. And I'm not gonna drool and say, this is the greatest OS change of all time, but for people that I said earlier that have been in the ecosystem asking for something new, your phone, I know, I, I know I'm gonna feel like I have a new phone, it's something new to play with. We also have CarPlay. Apple said it was used over 600 million times per day. They also touted that it was the most requested and most wanted OS in a car. We, we, we've heard those things. Look, I own a car that doesn't have CarPlay. I drive cars like when I'm in town with my mom that has CarPlay. And, I do like it, but I, I don't like absolutely need it. So I'm the type of person that is not like, gotta have CarPlay. No, I think, I think CarPlay is nice, but you don't have to have it. We'll hear a new design again, a refined, thanks to liquid glass, updates across the whole system. I thought it was neat. They're showing the difference between a light version and dark icons in CarPlay, and that'll play depending on, like, sometimes you drive through tunnels and it changes or during the time of day. So I thought that was really unique and nice. Also the ability to not be distracted, a smaller little call out when someone's calling you, the ability to, in messages, do quick tap back. So trying to reduce, distract, reduce distractions, which is a good thing on the road, but at least they showed us some new things that CarPlay is doing. And then also leaning into CarPlay Ultra, more customizable, more to match the different screens in your car. Aston Martin lovers, you're enjoying that right now. No one else is, but uh, we'll see what happens. But more brands are working to bring that. We'll, s we'll see when those cars uh, roll out. You know what surprised me in iOS 26? I would never say I wanted a revamped phone app, 
but they're giving us a revamped phone app. And then when I saw how they laid it, I'm like, huh, I kind of like what they're doing here. So right, typically you have it broken up in different sections, right? Your phone calls, you have um, like, your contacts, but now you can kind of merge them together, see different voicemails and messages, get quick access to your contacts. I think this unified thing for favorites and recent calls and voicemails might be something I actually like more than I thought because I, as I think about it, I don't like just scrolling through so much stuff. There's like about like five or six people I really, really need to get to really quick. So I'm, I'm thinking the unified layout might, might be a good thing. Also, new ways to eliminate distractions, call screening. We've seen call screening features on other OSs and other platforms before. Apple's doing a little different where they're saying, hey, they're using intelligence, they're waiting for that spam caller to give their name and what they wanna talk about before they then ring me. I'll get a notification saying what they're calling about. So at least I, instead of just getting that spam number, I have a little context of what's happening before I choose to accept it or deny it. And then for me, hold assist, this is gonna be, this is a killer feature. So let's say you're waiting, you got you go through customer service and sometimes they say, hey, you can wait for the next 13 or 20 minutes. There, the new phone app is going to be able to alert you when that operator, when that customer service rep gets back on the line. It's going to tell them, oh, Brian will be with you shortly. It'll then notify me on my phone and then I can jump on the call. So hold assist. That got some applause. I love that feature. The messages app. Do I, do I really need many things in the Messages app? Probably not, but okay, I'm not here to make fun of it, but yes, Apple will finally be getting background images to Messages. That's been out for ages. You can even do image playground images for your background images for Messages. I don't know if that matters to me at all, but hey, it matters to someone. But they did do some other good things. Um, group chats, this is kind of an interesting idea. They're gonna put polls in group chats. Now, I do think there's a lot of times where I'm in the group chat and we're all debating different things. Maybe it's about getting together, where to go eat. A poll could come in handy. Maybe it's even just calendar dates of what works. So I like that integration with that. Typing indicators of which members in the group are actually typing. So it could be two or three people ready to respond to whatever the topic is. All right, that, that, that's, I don't know. Maybe some of you are like, I really want that. Some people do. I'm, I'm like, I'm good. I, I, don't, I don't need to know everything you're doing at every moment. Also, new screening tools and messages. Now, we already know about call screening, which helps. Good Lord, I can't tell you how many trash calls I get. But in messages, you also get a lot of trash messages. It'll be able to, again, analyze and read them and put them in their own separate folder away so it doesn't clutter up. I don't even want to show you what my messages looks like because there's a lot of garbage in there. So, yes, screening messages, I'm all for that. And then we have... New ways with Apple intelligence to communicate. Okay, I'm not here to poo-poo on Apple intelligence, but you know, Genmojis, I didn't use. Apple talked about how this mixture of Genmojis, like a, a lady singing karaoke in a sequin dress, you can combine them and make like a mixed up Genmoji, a mixed moji. And then I'm sorry to say, I gotta keep it 100 with you all. Image Playground, the only time I've used Image Playground was when I first did my review. Then I sent a few to my nieces and nephews. I just have never touched it since. It does need to be more compelling. Apple is adding things like the ability to add an oil painting style and make it the profile picture for your, you know, in your contacts. Okay, I guess. Also like more realistic images for something like a, a baby invitation. There was like a stork I think that they showed and they wanted to add a sense of realism. Image playground, for me, for it to actually be usable on a daily basis still has a long ways to go. And that's just how I feel about it. Okay, we did talk about live translations in the previous video, that was the overall recap. But again, this is one of the biggest sleeper key features in iOS 26 across all of Apple's OSs. Here on the phone, and especially in iOS 26, really used for live translation, talking between two people. I can say something, it then translates it for them in their native language, back and forth. Not necessarily real time, but it looked like pretty darn close to it. But for business interactions, I could see how that could be useful for me. For family interactions, for some of my family overseas that quite honestly, like my grandma and grandpa in the past, they've passed on, but I didn't really have the best ways to communicate with them. And I think just knowing that in the future, future generations, FaceTime calls could now be more intimate and have live translations, that's meaningful. And this is across the Mac, iOS, 
iPad OS. So I love what they're doing with the translation features. Now another fun way that translation is really cool, okay, they released a new version of the Apple Music app. Yes, you can customize by pinning your favorite artists or albums at the top to get to, but dude, did you see this? Lyrics translation. Now, I'm a big BTS fan. I love my K-pop. I love my Afro beats. I kid you not, these songs, 90% of the songs, I have no idea what they're saying, but I still sing along, I hum along now, live translation. K-pop, Afrobeats, I'm there. This is my favorite feature for Apple Music. I don't know how many times I've told you how good Apple Maps have gotten over the years. It's, it's still a slept on app, just the quality, the fidelity, the accuracy, the communication it does with the Apple Watch to alert you when it turns. So Maps also gets an improvement. It now knows, right, the hot spots, really the main places that you stay, your home, a coffee shop, work, you're gonna bounce between those spots. Depending on traffic trends or what's happening, it's gonna offer you alternate routes before you ask for them, right? It's gonna show it on something like a live activity or notification so you can, ahead of time, plan around it and see it on your phone. Yo, that's a smart map. Now, before WWDC, there was a lot of talk about this games app. Apple showcased the new games app, a home that showcases, right, some of the favorite games that you like to play. I'm gonna tell you, I don't think the audience, it resonated with people that much. We've seen Game Center before. This new games app does offer new tabs, like play together to compare scores and achievements with your friends. There's challenges where you can compete for specific scores and rankings with your peers, but although we know that Apple is really leaning into gaming and they've made so many significant strides with it, I think that announcement fell a little flat because people were just like, okay, like we've seen some of this stuff before. Game Center didn't take off. Is this a new coat of paint with a few new features with the Games app? It is, but at least until I really get into it, it didn't make that much of an impact. And finally, an iOS visual intelligence updates. We, again, we haven't seen many Apple intelligence updates. Apple even said all that personal context, right? The key secret sauce of Apple Intelligence and Siri and iOS, they said it's coming within the next year. And they kind of brushed that off and talked about all these new features. So none of that is happening, right? But with visual intelligence now, think your phone, being able to take screenshots and then identify stuff, whether it's clothes, whether it's food. Man, I can't tell you how many people ask, hey, Brian, what's that shirt you're wearing? Hey, Brian, what are those shoes you're wearing? I don't want y'all to have it easy with visual intelligence, just take a screenshot and then buy the things. I'm trying to keep that away from you. But you know what, I'll let, you can let visual intelligence help you find out what I'm wearing and buy it for yourself very easily. It even will throw you into the apps that you might have to buy those items. I thought that was really clever. So visual intelligence at least gets a little more functionality that is practical. And that's the type of stuff we wanna see. It's a baby thing, but it is important. So iOS 26 is available to developers with a beta. There will be a public beta coming out, I believe, sometime in July. That's when we'll see a lot of the public betas for these OSs. And then the actual release, typically sometime in the fall around the iPhone season and Apple Watch season. But this was a more in-depth kind of reactions and features coming to iOS 26 here at WWDC 25. I will be putting on the beta. I'll be having some fun with it. I can't wait. I, I can't wait to see that liquid glass goodness. I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. That's gonna be cool. But overall, some nice improvements, bigger improvements, small improvements, medium sized improvements, but that's what you expect at WWDC 25. So if you want to learn more and you want to keep on sticking here on the channel, we have plenty more of everything that was announced here. So stick right here and we'll see you soon.